Yo everybody, what's good in the hood? It is 4.15 Monday morning, March 1st. Keep this curtain down between milkings to keep the heat in here. A few videos back I mentioned we have four groups of 40 cows, which makes 175. I think I misspoke. We have four groups of 40 cows out in the freestall. 15 over in the special needs pen that makes 175 milking cows. I'm not actually that bad at math. These are our flex stalls we've had in for a couple months. Cows are standing in place, they're not laying crooked or anything. But when they go to stand up, they bump into them, it doesn't hurt their back. So I think we're pretty pleased. It's been working out pretty good. All right, let's clean these stalls off. We're gonna bed the stalls this morning. So I'm just cleaning off the manure and moisture. I'm not pulling any fresh bedding back because we're gonna be throwing some bedding over top then. We bed up three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I like to keep fresh bedding in here. We think it's better to put a little bit less in more often than just to put a whole week's worth in at once. We're gonna go ahead and milk these first group of cows. Soon I'll be out to get the second group and then once we do that, we'll go get bedding and we'll just bed up this entire half of the barn at once. I did not get the second group yet, but I just want to go out here and start the skid loader up a while. I'll just say this, this stuff and bacteria are not good friends. I'm gonna go get the shaving skid loader now and we'll bed up this half the barn. So when I'm bedding up, 
I'm putting most of the bedding in the front of the stalls. And when the milkers are cleaning off beds, that way they can pull some fresh back to the back part of the bed. And I just got a little bit back here, just a little dusting. Gonna let these pen one cows start coming back in here. Getting the fourth group of cows over now. Once I get these out of here, my dad will come through. He'll bed this second half of the barn. I'm looking how deep the manure pit is. It's March 1st, so we're getting closer to spring now. Probably about three good feet in there still, I would say, out of an eight foot pit. So that's really good. Usually by this time of year, it's getting closer to the top. Sometimes we have to take some out by the beginning of April but we definitely are not gonna have to do that this year. It helps that we got the custom guys in with their big pumps. They were able to get it agitated a lot better and get the pit emptier than we normally do. My dad is mixing feed this morning. You can see he's at the back of that bunk there. You can see some of the concrete wall there. So we're gonna have to open up another bunk today. Probably switch over to this one here. We breed our cows using timed AI, so we have some shots to give to bring them into heat. And we give those every Monday morning. It doesn't take too long. I'm just gonna mix up a batch of feed for these heifers, and it'll be breakfast time. The first thing I do is just come out here and check on the heifers. And these are the breeding age heifers, so we're watching for ones that are in heat. And we, we don't use the shot program to bring these in because they usually show heat better than the cows and we can just watch them and catch them pretty easily. We'll put in 800 pounds of silage and 800 pounds of triticale out of that silo. Kind of slow getting going this morning. I ran to the store for a couple things. And now we're gonna start working on this tractor again. Gotta get this wheel spacing figured out. We're trying to get to 60 inch wheel spacing so that we can run between corn rows. There's at 30 inches, we'll run one row there, one row there. Right now it's 32 inches off center, so it's not quite right. And you were telling me what we're doing wrong here. We need to take both wheels off and yeah, we'll have to switch the rims, put this one on the other side, and we should be able to get the right distance then. We're gonna block it up here and then we can work on these wheels. We wanna block it up nice and safely. Got a bunch of six by sixes in there. I'd say that's safe there. A nice wide block right on the frame. Yeah, so that is good. 
This is loose now. This thing is heavy. It's filled with fluid. So the other day it was quite a struggle to get that tire to move in at all and we realize now it's full of liquid that makes a lot more sense things really heavy we're gonna try to use the skid loader and be really careful and just get the chain on that tire and see if we can pick the whole thing up That actually didn't go too bad. These things are really heavy. Skid loader lifted them up, just had to take it easy. We'll just take all these bolts out, drop that cast center out. Right. So we got both of the cast centers off of the wheels. So I'll try to explain what we're doing here. There's a much bigger dish on this side than there is on the bottom there. This big dish part was facing the outside before. If we would flip this over now and put it back up like that, the big dish part would be on the inside, which would be good. The only problem would be the wheels would be going the wrong direction then. Because this is what you want to be rolling forward this way. So what we're going to do is put this tire and wheel on that side. And then the dish will be facing in, but the tread will still be going the right direction. And put that tire and wheel on this side of the tracker. Thanks for your comments on the last video. Let me know what we needed to do here. It's making more sense to me now. It's just not that easy because this stuff is all extremely heavy. Just those cast centers alone are probably 200 pounds or something. Can't even really lift it. We'll use a skid loader and switch these and flip them, get them reattached, and then we can stick them back on. The cast parts have to stay on the same side because the bolts that thread into these there's the one side that has no threads the other side does so you have to have these on the same direction on the tractor Now we gotta lift up that center part. So now this goes up and this goes towards the outside. So we'll just set it up right here. This side's mostly on. 
We don't have it completely tight yet because I think we're going to need to move it about another inch in. We decided we're going to get the other wheel on first and then mess with it. Yeah, so all that for about two inches on each side. We're trying to decide if it was worth it right now. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. As long as we don't have to do it very often. You're just saying we learned something and we had fun. Tons of fun. So we'll tighten these down good and then drive it around a little bit. And it'll, if anything loosens up at all, we'll tighten down again to make sure everything's good. So we don't have these coming loose in the field. Center of the tire, center of the tractor, about 30, 30 and a half inches. So that'll give us the maximum amount of space between those corn rows. So some people were saying, why don't we go out to 90 inches and then straddle three rows instead of two? So on the sprayer, that would actually be fine. We could make the wheels wire and it wouldn't be a problem to straddle three. But on the corn planter, you can see the wheels on the corn planter. They're spaced out 60 inches apart, straddling two rows. And then there's another wheel out here at be 120 inches apart. So if we would have the tractor set at 90, we'd actually be running right over one of the rows that's gonna be planting you gotta go 60 or 120 inches for it to work. So we do 60 inches, 120 would be extremely wide. That's what a millennial farmer uses, I think 120 inch spacing. You can see we're just straight in line now with the front and back tires. I don't think the tractor looks quite as good like this, but it's what we need for the job we do. So we're done in here for now, it's soon time to feed cows. My dad's gonna get the dirty bucket on the skid loader and we're gonna open this bunker up. We just have a tiny bit of silage left in the back of this one. I'll use some of that today and then mix it with the new stuff. Hopefully the silage is good and clean in this bunk. Pile dirt on the front of this bunk to seal it up. So we're gonna have to drag that all out of here. Hole right here in the plastic. Our nutritionist showed up this morning and he grabbed a little sample out of the plastic there. We wanted to get a moisture test so we know where we're at compared to the other silage. a little bit of a surprise. What are you gonna see when you open it up? From what I can tell, it looks really good. It smells good. Just a little bit of junk right at the front edge. We'll get that out of here. But looks like good feed all the way across. The corners are good. So this is why we wrap the sidewalls before we fill. Get this plastic going the whole way down to the floor. Just seal that corner up. It's not always the case though. Sometimes we get holes or we uh, don't pack it quite right at the edges or something.
We have a little bit of good feed in the back of this bunk. I'll come in and get some of this and then we'll get the rest out of the new bunk. Oh, the sun came out. It's nice. Finish the day off with mixing some feed for the cows. cow batch is done. Well, it's so windy that it blew my camera off the top of the wall there. Only took about three scoops to get all I needed for the mix today because I got some from the other bunk. 